Good evening and welcome. Tonight we'll be going over the history and geography of Malaysia. As you can see, Malaysia is in Southeast Asia, down in the more islandy archipelago section, right? It consists of two different parts. We'll start over here. This is known as Peninsular Malaysia. And it's where the majority of the population lives. It's very highly populated, and you'll find out why in a little bit. It borders Thailand up here and Singapore down here. You can see the capital city of Kuala Lumpur right here. And you can also see Putrajaya right here. Um, and they're apparently running out of space in Kuala Lumpur, so a lot of like government and important buildings, things like that, are located in Putrajaya. There's also the island of Penang, which you can't really see on this map. It's really small. It's right here. It'll come up in its history, but you can see the city of Georgetown, very major city up there. And you can see all of the big cities along the major highways, which I'll mention too in its history. It's a pretty mountainous down in here, but you can see a lot flatter down along the coasts. And that would be where the majority of the cities and things like that are, of course, not so much in the mountain areas. Moving on over to the other half of Malaysia, you can see this is on the island of Borneo, and it's all up here. It is bordered by Indonesia and by Brunei. Um, which I've already covered from Indonesia and Brunei on my channel, as well as Singapore. I'll try to remember to link them up in the cards so you can check those out to learn more about them, because it's very interesting histories. There are uh, two main sections of the um, Malaysian Borneo area, Eastern Malaysia. It has lots of names for it, but this one over here is Sarawak. This one is Sabah. And these are a lot less sparsely populated, as you can see, not very many cities compared to over here. And that's because this area is incredibly mountainous and forested with huge, beautiful rainforests, incredibly um, diverse in its animals and plants, flora and fauna. You can find orangutans on Borneo. You can find those big corpse flowers, the giant, like the world's biggest flower. Um, lots of really incredible animals and plants on Borneo up in the, the, the rainforest here. You can also find the highest peak in Malaysia right here. This is Mount Kinabalu. It's really beautiful. I will show you some incredible pictures of these places in this book about Malaysia after we go over its history. But yeah, very beautiful. I have to stress that. There's also lots of little islands around. You can see like the maritime borders here. It's very complicated in this corner of the world. So many islands around, but Malaysia has, I think it was like 800 islands or so. And lots of big mountain ranges, lots of rivers. And it's, it's just a very beautiful place. So you know, why don't I go into its history so we can learn more about it. So. The first humans would have lived in this area about 40,000 years ago. Malaysia has a lot, a lot, lot of caves, especially in here in Borneo. And in those caves, there's lots of evidence of early man, lots of bones and things like that. Lots of ancient grave sites and really interesting things. We don't really know much about the ancient people of Malaysia. Um, but we do know that in the first century CE, traders from China and India started um, building trading centers along the peninsula here, and establishing little towns and cities and important trading spots. And of course, they brought um, Buddhism and Hinduism with them too, introducing it to the people of the land here. Um, from the 2nd century to the 15th, the northern part of the peninsula up here was dominated by the Lankasuka kingdom. In the south would have been 
the Srivijaya kingdom, which in the 13th century was taken over by the Majapahit. And um, I go over a little bit more about that in my video on Indonesia. And also Singapore, because in the 15th century, there was a prince from Singaputra named Parameswara. He ran away. Um, he fled the kingdom and went a little farther north to form the Sultanate of Malacca. You can see Malacca still right there. And it became a very powerful trading center because this is the time when um, trade is finally starting to pick up on a global scale. And Malacca basically just hit the jackpot just at the right time and it exploded in wealth. And that got the attention of the Portuguese, who of course wanted to get in on the spices in this area. So the Portuguese conquered the area in 1511, and then later the Dutch, who were in control of what is now Indonesia, uh, they fought a battle against the Portuguese and they took over in 1641. And then eventually the English came in, dominating the area, just like the English were good at doing at the time. The British East India Company um, took control of Penang Island right here, hence the name Georgetown after King George III. The British were really sneaky because they didn't fight for this territory. They negotiated with all the, the sultans and things. Oh, I, I forgot to mention that. Um, Islam would have come into the area during like the 13th, 14th, 15th centuries when these trading centers are really exploding and Arab traders came in. Um, Islam is the national religion of Malaysia today, so it's very important to stress. So there were many sultanates all throughout the islands here. So Britain negotiated with those and said, you know, um, we'll work this out. Let's just build our trading post. You'll get wealthy, blah, blah, blah. Um, so that's how they got Penang Island, their first big trading spot, and uh, by 1819 they had taken Singapore, which you can learn a lot more about in my video on Singapore. In 1824 they managed to control Malacca, the jackpot. They eventually combined all of these into a crown colony called the Straits Settlement. And um, also during this time, they encouraged a lot of workers from China to come into the area and work in the plantations there. And um, there's still a very huge Chinese population in Malaysia today, especially on the peninsula here. They eventually hopped over to Borneo and tried to gobble up as much land as they could over here. They um, ceded Sarawak in 1842, which I talk about in my Brunei video, because Sarawak was in control of a man named James Brooke, who was known as the White Raja. And wow, he was a really shifty guy. Again, you can learn more about him in my video on Brunei. And um, speaking of, the sultans of Brunei and Saba ceded their land to Britain in 1878. So essentially, Britain controlled all of what you can see here of Malaysia, including Brunei and Singapore. Flash forward to December 8th, 1941. Japan invaded. It's World War II. They just bombed Pearl Harbor and they were taken over, right? So um, the military had been expecting Japan to invade. So they were keeping very close eye on the ocean here expecting an invasion, but the Japanese soldiers invaded by land via bicycle and took over Malaysia. Um, whoever thought of that, I mean, anyway, I mean, it was a clever idea, but very devastating for Malaysia, of course, when Japan, when Imperial Japan took over a, a country, it was never good for anyone who lived there. But eventually, the war ended, Japan lost, Britain retook control of their lands here. And of course, the people here were like, um, we want independence. We don't want to be a part of you anymore. Um, we definitely want our independence after what happened when Japan was here. So a independence movement sprung up 
and in 1948 the Federation of Malaya was formed which was all these areas except Brunei. Brunei stayed and did its own thing which it still is today. And by August 31st 1957 the um, Commonwealth of Malaya uh, was formed their official independence but they're still part of the British Commonwealth today. Like I've said before the British the Commonwealth is a weird thing. It's, it's, it's like a club more than like a territory owned by Britain, but you know, the queen is still the queen and it's weird. I don't know. I think just as an American, it just seems really weird, but things were not smooth sailing in Malaysia after the, this time starting in 1948 an era known as the Malayan emergency erupted. And this was the communist party in Malaya fighting back and trying to gain control and that went on until 1960 and it was pretty brutal let me tell you the British fought back pretty roughly and um, their response was to just round up the communists and put them in places called new villages which were just like basically horrific detention centers which just made them even mad and made them retaliate um, in 1969, which I'll get to in a second, um, there was also a lot of ethnic conflict with Indonesia. In 1965, they expelled Singapore for a variety of reasons. Check out my video on Singapore to find out why. And uh, like I said, in 1969, those big riots happened and the Malaysian government was like, okay, we really got to do something about this, right? So they tried a lot of different things. One of the things they tried was to redefine the Malay culture in a word that's called Bumi Patera. And um, it's sort of, from what I can tell, if you're Malay or from Malaysia, correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems like a phrase that's not really used, but those who use it, like, say it with their whole chest basically. It was a policy to elevate Malay people into higher positions of power, which made like the Chinese people and Indian people living in Malaysia feel very excluded. Um, it was pretty controversial, but anyway, by the 1980s, the economy exploded in Malaysia really, really took off in a big way. They finally hit their stride. This is when they start developing Kuala Lumpur into a major big skyscraper city. The Petronas Towers were built in Kuala Lumpur eventually. And for a minute, they were the tallest building in the world. Today, they're the tallest twin towers in the world. Um, they built the big um, expressways to link all of these cities together. You can see here um, they built Putrajaya to help expand Kuala Lumpur, so on and so forth. And Malaysia did fairly well. There was the Asian financial crisis in 97, I believe, and then the 2008 recession, but Malaysia essentially kept bouncing back after that until uh, 2015, a huge corruption scandal sort of rocked the government. And the next election was in 2018, and that led to a party change for the first time in Malaysia's history. So, um, Malaysia's still trying to kind of like land on its feet and see where it goes from there. It's the very first big government change in its history. So, I mean, time will tell where it goes from there. I'm not going to comment on politics, but, you know, I'm always very optimistic, I think, in my heart. I think Malaysia's going to be just fine. Let me show you some pictures in here. So if you're wondering what this is, it's a hat. Check that out. She's really beautiful, isn't she? I love the hat. That's so cool. Let's learn about Malaysia and see some pictures. Look at these cute kids in his Power Ranger shirt. So here's the Patronus Towers. Very huge. And these are dancers. It says it's Kuala Lumpur City Day beautiful picnic. Can you imagine that? I mean, that scenery is your picnic. That's awesome. And a food stall. Yum, yum. Yum. But that food's delicious. 
So this is in Saba, typical forest coastline area. It's really beautiful. And here's an aerial shot of Kuala Lumpur. There's the Padronas Towers from the side. A monsoon playing in it. And this is the island of Langkawi. Isn't it gorgeous? Borneo, the river going through the rainforest. And this really cool modern mosque behind the Petronas Towers. There's a lot of cool mosques. You'll see another one in this book. The monorail going over the city. And a mangrove swamp. Trees growing in the murky, salty water. Here's Mount Kinabalu. It's very intimidating looking, doesn't it? Very jacketed. And very cool. So this is a fort built by the Portuguese. One of the big, like, historical preserved places in Malaysia. Here is a dolmen. So a dolmen would be a gravesite with stones built on top of it. And they're found all over the world. Very interesting. This is a carving from a head hunter. So one of the original tribes from Borneo were head hunters. And here's Malacca. I wish there was a date on this photo. It looks really kind of old school, like maybe from the 30s or 40s. I don't know. What else do we have? So this is the first Prime Minister of Malaysia, uh, Tunku Abdul Rahman, and he's signing the, the official document saying the Federation of Malaya is founded. This is the Parliament building, there's the flag up there. A Moor monument, the National Monument, and it says this was created by the a uh, person who made the Iwo Jima Memorial in Washington, D.C. They look very similar. Very moving also. Like, literally and figuratively, they look like they're moving. So this was, I believe this was the Prime Minister at the time this book came out. This is Datuk Najib Tun Razak. And there's Barack Obama. They're having a summit, it looks like. Um, the Prime Minister, um who was Prime Minister during that big boom during the 80s. This is um, Dr. Mahathir Mohamed. And here's that Prime Minister again. Um, the delegates of the party are very official looking. This is where the Supreme Court meets. Very fancy building. You know what I should mention real quick is that they do have a Prime Minister, right? But they also have a king. And what they do, because each region has its own, like, traditional sultan, and every five years they rotate kings, so one of those sultans gets a turn to be the king of Malaysia. And it's mostly a ceremonial role, role, hello, sort of like the queen over in England, you know, or lots of other monarchs around the world. But um, they're the only country in the world that does that, that has rotating monarchs like that. I don't think that comes up in this book. Probably some other books I'm going to read to you this week. I just thought I'd mention that. He's harvesting some rubber. And she's uh, shifting some rice. Sifting some rice, I should say. I'm harvesting some palm oil from these fronds here. Oil branches, whatever. Some eco-tourists enjoying the river. A turtle hatchery. Because <laughs> you know how the turtles lay their eggs in the sand and the little baby turtles come out at night, making sure all the little baby turtles are safe. Oh, this is sad. It looks like they're uh, plowing down some of the rainforest to build something. That's always helpful. A big happy family, especially this guy. And here's a longhouse, one of the traditional buildings from the native peoples of Malaysia. And two boys, and you know what's interesting? 
one of the books, let me get it. One of the books I'm gonna whisper to you later this week is the same picture on the cover. Isn't that funny? <laughs> That's interesting. This is Chinatown. Very hustle bustle, right? Another big family. And working hard in school or in Islamic school. She's working in a factory. A Malay wedding. Don't they look lovely? And a Chinese wedding. Passing out some tea. And a Hindu wedding. Very colorful, loud, and fun. Oh, and a Chinese tombstone. This is a really cool mosque. This is the Ubudaya Mosque, which there's a picture of it in my book. Let me see if I can slide it over. Look at that. It's a really interesting, beautiful mosque. Very cool. There's some men praying. And look at this temple. Hindu temple in Kuala Lumpur. Stunning, isn't it? And this is a Taoist temple in Chinatown in Kuala Lumpur, also very intricate. And this church in Malacca was built by the Dutch, as you can tell by the architecture. Very interesting religious buildings in Malaysia, isn't it? And she's a fortune teller, speaking of religious traditions, the oldest kind. Lots of different languages spoken throughout Malaysia. This guy is on a tri show, I believe, waiting for someone to drive around the town. Working hard in school. Looks like that's the teacher teaching the class. Looks like a good lesson. She looks like a fun teacher. Satellite dish outside the television station. Some Chinese opera performers. I love these costumes. So beautiful. All the details. Love it. Shadow puppets is one of the very ancient traditional storytelling slash art forms in this part of the world. These people are doing a traditional Malay dance, it says. And playing some traditional music on the gongs. And he's playing a mouth organ having fun doing it by the looks of it. A marching band. Looking very much like in America. It says it's on Independence Day. And this person's making some batik cloth, which is a really, um, really beautiful cloth, I should say, all hand stamped. Very time consuming process. Kite flying is a big deal in this part of the world. They have festivals and they fly kites on holidays, like you go to the beach to fly your kite. It's a big thing. Diving with some turtles. Very sweet. And Silat is talking about here, the form of martial art practiced in Malaysia. This is apparently a famous martial artist, Noor Parhar, apparently. And some more Chinese opera performers getting ready doing their makeup and hair. This is at the Asian X Games. How fun that would be. And the Junior X Games. Even more fun. Oh, speaking of fun, look at this. This is a, like a horse festival, it says in Kota Bahad. Very colorful. And of course, Chinese New Year. Very big deal in this part of the world. Big celebration. I can turn the page. I can show you more. There we go. Um, this is during Tai Pusam, Hindu celebration. And this is for Goai Dayak. Da the Dayak people being one of the um, oldest um, cultures in Malaysia. And gathering for prayer. Muslim day here, it says. Some food. Look how, look at this cake. Lots of really nice sweets, it looks like. Some rice wine. That 
natural <laughs> locally made nasi lemak, one of the beloved national dishes of Malaysia. And he's roasted some street food. What is this? They look like rats. Are those rats? Anyway, I don't know what that is. I, I guess it's rats. I don't know. Some satay is what we call it in America. I'm pretty sure that's not how it's pronounced in Malaysia, but um, we have our own American version of that. It's really good. Here's a better map of Malaysia. You can see all the different parts of it. Johor. I didn't mention Johor in the history. Johor is one of the big sultanates. I mentioned that more in my Singapore video. You can see Malacca, Selangor, all the, the important ones. Kedah, that was the one that gave um, Penang Island to the British. So on and so forth, but that's the end of the book tonight. So thank you so much for watching. Like I've said, I have more books about Malaysia coming for you this week. So if you want to make sure you don't miss those, be sure to subscribe. And I hope that you found this video relaxing and educational. And I hope that you have a very good, 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 good night.